Hi, everybody. John, Dan, Steelers. Yeah, if you're a Steelers fan. Even if you're not, still that's where they play. A little rocky so far this year. So, William Dawes. Do you remember William Dawes? I do a little bit now that you've told me about it. Yeah, see that? I didn't remember it either. William Dawes, Paul Revere. Everyone remembers Paul Revere's name. Very few remember William Dawes' name. They were both tasked with the same initiative. Get on the horse, tell people, get people where they need to be. We all know the Paul Revere story. We don't know the William Dawes. If you read the history, and this comes out of the book, The Tipping Point, if you want to pick up the short version of this. But basically, it had everything to do with the two specific people. Paul was really good at engaging and galvanizing people to act. William Dawes was really good at riding around and making a statement about what was going on, but not that next step. Very short version, if you want details there. But what that talks about is, it, it says a lot of things to me, right? People in the right seat on the bus. Right. Um, what makes those two people different? How do you get the most out of both if you're in a leadership role? But talk about those differences in people and personalities and two people can go do the exact same thing with massively different results. But the desire should be to be respected, not necessarily to be liked. Right. Because if you're respected, people will act. People will react to you. Yes. People will want to be around you. People will want to listen to what you say. If you're just someone who likes to be liked, you don't necessarily carry you don't that, get that air about yeah. yourself. Yeah. I'll give you an example on a sales call, not to fluff me up. That's not where this is, it's just to make a point. I was meeting with a business owner. He was in his 80s, and his daughter was in her 50s, and she was planning on taking over the business, and they were looking at sales training. I could not get her to admit that she had issues or problems or concerns. I could not. And so I, at one point, I just ended the meeting with, hey, I'm not going to be able to help you, blah, blah, blah. As they were leaving, he handed me a note. He said, read this whenever we leave. I go, okay. So they left. I opened it up and he had written during the meeting, if this guy's any good, he'll tell her no. <laughs> there you go. Yep. That was a life lesson because I was sit sitting there thinking, oh my goodness, what did I do to mess this sales call up? Yes. Nothing. I was being the expert. I was being the person who's respected. And yep. so if you're a leader, your people, do they... Do they want to work for you? Do they want to work hard for you because they respect you or because they just think you're their friend? Yes. And the same thing in sales. You know, I want to walk in on a sales call and I want that prospect to say, oh, this is different. I've never had something like this happen. Yes. I've never had this type of conversation. It doesn't mean I get the sale, but it does show that there's difference. So I want to be that person that has a lot of respect and has people that are willing to do a lot for me. There you go. So. Are, are there tips or pieces you say on, hey, in that respect column, if you, if you don't feel like you're there, here are some things to work on? Self-confidence. Okay. Have to have it. You have to believe that you can influence other people. There we go. Those are two things to work on. All right. All right, everybody. We'll see you again more. See you.